have to really escalate the noise we make so that we'll be heard. Welcome to Gay USA. I'm Andy Hum. And I'm Ann Northrup. Uh, and, and there we are. Oh, hello. Hey. I recognize those <laughs> folks. How about that, Jodie Foster? <laughs> we are There's going. There's <laughs> so many different reactions to Jodie Foster. So we're going to have a substantial conversation about this at the top of the Knowing show. Knowing that there were varying opinions in the audience. And this is the top news story of the last week. That in itself it says something. Uh, but in other news, we told you last week that the White House had chosen a very anti-gay pastor to give the benediction at the inauguration next week. And an out gay man to do, to do the poem. Yes. Well, the pastor has been ditched and a new progressive pro-gay pastor has been chosen. Uh, San Francisco is moving to name their airport after Harvey Milk. That'll be interesting. Uh, Wyoming, Wyoming is considering legislation to grant same-sex couples uh, equal legal rights. We made some progress this past week in Idaho, Kentucky, Florida, and Utah. I'm sure in other places as well, but these are the stories that we have. Well, we also made progress at the European Court, which uh, issued a ruling rejecting the right of uh, people who want to discriminate against LGBT people to cite religious beliefs as a basis for that. Naked gay protesters demonstrated against the Pope out, right outside the Vatican. We have video. Yes, we do. <laughs> and uh, I, I'm an Oscar nominee, and so is our associate producer, Bill Bowman. Because you're both involved with the film How to Survive a Plague, which was nominated for Best Documentary at the Oscars. Well, we're very eager to see what happens. Uh, the Miss Universe pageant, which you remember last year had a dust-up about a transgender uh, contestant in Canada, had a transgender uh, contestant in the Miss California USA uh, contest this last weekend. Uh, actor Victor Garber, you remember him, might remember him as the guy who built the ship in Titanic, among many other roles. He's in everything. Has acknowledged that he is gay. And he didn't do it in a big speech at the Golden Globes. No. Andy has been to the theater again. We'll tell you about the new play starring Laurie Metcalf and the Broadway revival of Picnic. Picnic. But we also want to tell our viewers who are watching around the country that Free Speech TV, which distributes us to the Dish Network and uh, Direct TV and cable systems, is doing a mini pledge drive next week, and therefore our airing will be limited to Saturday night at 11 p.m. Eastern on the 26th of January. So uh, check your local schedule, but. Uh, next week only. So we start with Jodie Foster. You may remember her, Silence of the Lambs, uh, The Accused. <laughs> Freaky Friday. Well, well, Silence <laughs> of the Lambs and The Accused were the films that she won, the Best Actress for Academy Award, 89, 91. I liked her in Freaky Friday. Okay. Uh, so <laughs> she gets the Lifetime Achievement Award at the Golden Globes, the Cecil B. DeMille Award. Uh, and. Um, she should have just sung, I am what I am, <laughs> even though Harvey Firestein didn't like the way she handled her coming out. Here was the first tip off. I, of course, was watching the red carpet interviews before the show began, yes. and there's Ryan Seacrest on the E! Network. Ah, come on up, Jodie Foster. Well, who are you wearing? Giorgio Armani. Oh, well, that's a tip blah, off. blah, Is blah. He blah. Gay? And, uh, <laughs> and Ryan says to her, Well, you're the one person tonight who doesn't have to be nervous because you know you're getting the Lifetime Achievement Award. You're not waiting to hear your name call. And she said, As I'm a matter terrified. of fact, <laughs> I'm very nervous. Well, she should and have we should have we should have known then that something was up. So I guess if we're gonna discuss it, we should show it so that people can see the relevant sections of the speech that we're it's, going to discuss. It's all over the internet, it's on YouTube and a million different versions. You can see it anywhere, but here is a slightly abbreviated version. <coughs> Excuse me. 
I can see of Jodie Foster's acceptance speech at the Golden Globes with the Cecil B. DeMille Award. I guess I just have a sudden urge to say something. <coughs> that, um, I've never really been able to air in public, so uh, declaration that I'm a little nervous about, but maybe not quite as nervous as my publicist right now, huh, Jennifer? Um, but, uh, you know, I'm just going to put it out there, right? Loud and proud, right? So um, I'm going to need your support on this. I am uh, single. Yes, I am. I am single. No, I'm kidding. But I mean, I'm not really kidding, but I'm kind of kidding. I mean, thank you for the enthusiasm. Did, can I get a wolf whistle or something? I mean, please. Jesus. Seriously. I hope that you're not disappointed that there won't be a big coming out speech tonight. Because uh, I already did my coming out about a thousand years ago, back in the Stone Age, in those, uh, those very quaint days when a fragile young girl would open up to trusted friends and family, co-workers, and then gradually, proudly to everyone who knew her, to everyone she actually met. But now, apparently, I'm told that every celebrity is expected to honor the details of their private life with a press conference, a fragrance, and a primetime reality show. <laughs> if you had been a public figure from the time that you were a toddler, if you'd had to fight for a life that felt real and honest and normal against all odds, then maybe then you too might value privacy above all else. Privacy. Someday, in the future, people will look back and remember how beautiful it once was. I have given everything up there from the time that I was three years old. That's reality show enough, don't you think? There is no way I could ever stand here without acknowledging one of the deepest loves of my life, my heroic co-parent, my ex-partner in love, but righteous soul sister in life, my confessor, ski buddy, conciliary, most beloved BFF of 20 years, Sidney Bernard. Thank you, Sid. I, I am so proud of our modern family, our amazing sons, Charlie and Kit, who are my reason to breathe and to evolve my blood and soul. And boys, in case you didn't know it, this song, like all of this, this song is for you. And I can't help but get moony, you know? This feels like the end of one era and the beginning of something else. Scary and exciting. And now what? Well, I may never be up on the stage again, on any stage for that matter. Change. You gotta love it. I will continue to tell stories, to move people by being moved, the greatest job in the world. It's just that from now on, I may be holding a different talking stick. And Maybe it won't be as sparkly. Maybe it won't open on 3,000 screens. Maybe it will be so quiet and delicate that only dogs can hear it whistle. But it will be my writing on the wall. Jodie Foster was here. I still am. And I want to be seen, to be understood deeply, and to be not so very lonely. Thank you, all of you, for the company. Here's to the next 50 years. So what just happened? <laughs> I mean, that's what a lot of people were asking themselves. What, what was she doing? What was she trying to do? Obviously, she was trying to be more open, and we always celebrate that. But I, I think the uh, denigration, I don't think she appreciates what even some of her colleagues who have come out later, like Ellen and Jane Lynch and all these other people, uh, have done and the courage that they showed. Not honey boo boo child or reality show stuff. They did it or in a perfume. They, yeah, they did it very they did it in a very dignified way. Uh, but this is who Jody Foster is. Uh, exactly. Uh, I I've sort of been talking to people about it and listening to what various people have to say because there is a variety of opinion. Some people were furious at her for this and thought she was being really defensive and nasty and Well, I, I, and, thought, she, I, thought, she was being, I thought she was being, I thought that was nasty to compare coming out to like uh, just uh, exhibitionism essentially. Others were willing to overlook that and appreciate the fact that she was getting up and talking about it. You know, she, this is the Golden Globes. There isn't a lot of serious talk at the Golden Globes and she chose an international broadcast right. to to discuss these issues. Uh, do I think it was the most elegant way to do it? I absolutely do not. But here are some things to keep in mind. Mel Gibson was in the audience oh. and her friend at the table. Yeah, Very they've distracting. Been friends for Very 20 distracting. years or whatever since Maverick. Do I like him? Absolutely. Of course not, but they are friends. 
Uh, and we all overlook various things. She's got things a lot of friends. friends. This was her, the friend she brought to stand uh, by her she's to, to emphasize her iconoclasm and all that kind of stuff. Uh, here's what I got from listening to people and, and looking at this. Uh, as a friend pointed out to me last night, this is a woman with not a good sense of humor who <laughs> thought she was trying to be funny. That's true. She uh, repeatedly. Funny. Right. And her jokes were not going over. I'm single. And again, that's a. That's I'm 50. Right. Uh, it, well, really? Well, it comes from Saturday Night Live. Well, it wasn't like funny, that. and no right. one laughed at it. And it wasn't even really funny when she went from, you well, know, uh, I'm coming out to I'm single. It well, just wasn't a, funny. A, a headline A lot of actors uh, are, don't have much to say. But the point is, she got up and tried to give the speech, and I'm trying to analyze this and, and look and at I'm what she was doing. And she, uh, part of it was that she was trying to be funny, and she isn't funny. Uh, yes, she was defensive, because she has been uh, uh, held to account, or people have tried to hold her. Well, right. I mean, and I she was trying to deal with that. She's been on the cover that. of gay magazines for of years, course, yes. as one, as the most powerful gay person in the country, basically. Well, which, yes, well, and one no. of them, like Anderson Cooper, uh, the out up magazine there, did yes. that, I think. And she didn't do it as easily or elegantly as he, who we criticize for doing it so late, and and right. so many others have right. done. Uh, but she's not. She's not comfortable. She's not. She says at the end. I think the most revealing thing she said at the end. Uh, 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 Jodie Foster was here, I still am, and I, listen to this, I want to be seen, to be understood deeply, and to be not so very lonely. Well, let me explain something to everybody. <laughs> One of the reasons we all had to come out is to meet somebody else and find love. You have to come out well, to some extent. Well, she's done that. Well, let me, wait, wait, wait a minute. You have to come out to some extent to do that. Well, she just said she's single. And yes, she's and she's never had long-term relationships. She's, and she's never been in solidarity with us as a community, no. despite all the history that we've gone through in the last 30 years, the AIDS crisis, the, the attacks, all that kind of stuff. You would, now, again, we all talk about Jodie Foster as this you know, child star who was stalked by John Hinckley, the guy who shot Still Ronald Reagan. Still is being stalked by well, John Hinckley. Still is being stalked by John Hinckley. Still is being stalked by John Hinckley. All right, lots of people Hinkley. are stalked in this business. Oh, come on. Lots you're not, of people are stalked in this business. You're not going to underestimate what happened to her with John no, some, Hinckley. Well, some people are dead because they were stalked, yes. okay? Uh, so, you know, I mean, she's not the only one who has had that happen in stardom. Uh, but, you know, yes, it does explain a lot with her. Yes. I remember when she went to Yale and she decided to adopt this very private life. I respected her for that in the sense that, you know, she just wanted to have a relatively normal life private life. I appreciate that. But don't confuse your privacy with something as basic as you have a woman partner. She did thank her at a ceremony in two, 2007 or 8 yes. uh, before. So like, what's everybody thanks their partners at these uh, ceremonies except the most closeted people. So I, Look, I certainly would have liked her to be out 30 years ago. I would like her to be more gracious and elegant in the way she says it now. Uh, but I also give her credit for making a decision to finally stand well, up and deal with it and to do it in this venue, which is uh, tough. I think the reason that she did it, which most of the commentators have sort of missed, is for her children. Yes, and uh, she said that. Yeah, well, because, I mean, it's, this, it's the reason Ricky Martin did, but his kids are like toddlers. Uh, you know, <laughs> he didn't want his kids to have to lie. Mm -hmm. uh, he wanted them to, you know, he wants them he wants to be honest with them, of course, and he wants them to be able to be honest with other people. And I think that's what she wants for her kids. And boys, in case you didn't know it, this song, all of this, this song is for you. Uh, and they look very proud of her. Yes. They look very happy and, with this. And, and, and they've been and rather and shielded. Relaxed. I mean, she does not, you know, feature her kids in, in these things and all those kinds of stuff. Um, you know, and look. She's never done anything in the movement other than give money to the Trevor Project that I know about. Their biggest donations right. ever. She helped finance the movie in the first place, and then she is the biggest donor to uh, the Trevor Project, uh, but starting you know, 20 years ago. I just think it is always important for people to stand up for themselves, no matter what status they have, unless you're in danger of getting killed. Now, you, now, you know, again, that's not the reason John Hinckley wanted to kill her or, or, or stalk her. Reagan. He wanted to be with her. Yeah, but the people who want to be with you are people who often end up well, killing he you. shot Ronald Reagan. Yes, he did. And James Brady. Well, I just, I, I, I find her very awkward. 
uh, personally. Yes, yes and she is. For her to talk about wanting to be known and and feeling lonely, I thought was just uh, kind of tragic, and uh, and it gave me some sympathy for her while still certainly not being happy about her not coming out earlier or easier. Well, I hope she appreciates our analysis. We have a lot more experience with <laughs> Look, these things. I and she's uh, but Jody, I, Jody, you're always welcome on the program. I really think you can't underestimate uh, a lot of the life she's led and the, and the John Hinckley factor. Um, uh, evidently, her mother uh, is a, or was a lesbian, too. That didn't get mentioned Although here. she was very open, basi well, I shouldn't say very open. She was kind of oblique about the fact that the mother is obviously demented at this point and can barely understand her. Uh, yeah, that's a kind of harsh way to put it, but No, yes. no, I'm saying, I'm not yes. saying harshly, the mother is suffering from dementia. Yes, yes, uh, and, yes. And she was being out about that. Now that's, you know, come on, for someone who, cl she, she also made this big plea for privacy, but these are the kinds of things that people think share publicly because they want others to understand. She's very conflicted. Kind of she's yeah. very, she's a, she's a very strange character and she's very conflicted. Uh, I read a reference to her in one of the analyses about her hating weakness. Uh, she's one of these people who you know, I hate weakness. Well, let's, lest we forget, uh, when Tony Kushner wrote Angels in America, he put in the mouth of the Roy Cohn character, that's what homosexuality is, essentially. Right. When you admit to that, you're weak, you're, yeah. you know, you're something wrong with you in that sense. Uh, I just think she's enormously conflicted, and I think this speech was a perfect example of this. I think she contradicted herself all the way through it. Uh, oh, she said she was basically going to retire, and then she goes to the press conference afterwards and says, no, I'm not retiring. Well, I wondered whether that, what she was really saying was, after I give a speech like this, I'm not going to be given the opportunity oh, come to do on. things. Well, Ellen, that, DeGeneres is, Ellen DeGeneres' stock not went down Look, and then rose I, enormously. You're, you're acting like she's making rational decisions about this when we've just spent the last 10 minutes talking well, about how irrational she is about I, it. I kind of heard her say that she might make you know, small uh, independent films or something like that will that will be more honest. Maybe. Uh, she uh, hasn't fully explained it, but I wonder to what extent she thinks. Well, she certainly got us talking. <laughs> and uh, not talking because she was bleeped at one point Wait, in the middle of this. Well, what said, uh, Well, the reference I read was that uh, she had said Jesus somewhere in the middle <laughs> of it, and NBC censored her reference to Jesus. What do you mean? He's the risen Lord. Why would they bleep that? <laughs> You're not allowed to say that on television? <laughs> Evidently. Well, that's, that's just what I read as, uh, as a reference. Now, uh, I don't think we've put up the pictures yet, correct oh. me if I'm wrong. We do have a picture of her with Sidney Bernard, her longtime uh, partner and Yes, and, and I, the co I'm, sure, I'm sure a lot of people heard that as Sid, a guy, yeah. um, although she did reference her as her soul sister. Yes. But that could uh, be a guy, too. And <laughs> Sidney was at the uh, Golden Globes. Sydney this is not a picture from the, the Golden Globes. This no. is some years ago. Yes. Uh, but there's another picture of the two of them with the kids when they were younger. They're now teenagers, but that's a little family picture that's been circulated. So, you know, they were out and about right. and seen. Uh, she just didn't want to talk about it particularly. Well, look, we're, we are trying to make a world, and, you know, sometimes our viewers attack us and say we're too hard on people. But, you know, we're trying to make a world where people can be themselves. And we do, I do at least, see an obligation of all of us to do what we can for the movement as, as you know, to the extent that we can. We don't have to make it our whole lives. But there are a whole bunch of LGBT actors who have made some big contributions to uh, that. All I have to do is look at uh, activists in Uganda or right. uh, Moldova. They have a right to be closeted <laughs> if they want because they will be shot. Well, I think it's, it's just shameful that people uh, yes. like Jodie Foster feel a need to cover up when uh, yes. people like that are putting their lives on the so. line every day. But, uh, but you know. I Welcome to the club, uh, Jody. You didn't say the words gay or lesbian, but you'll do that in your next speech. <laughs> or interview or whatever. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, just totally routinely, someone noticed that uh, longtime star Victor Garber, who's been in every other movie and TV show there. ever made, 
Uh, his Wikipedia page refers to his longtime partner. So someone said, oh, I see Her your Wikipedia page refers to quietly this. Quietly living with his longtime partner, artist Rainer Andreessen. I've referenced Victor Garber and stories as gay for decades. Well, there you I go. I had a friend who tried to date him uh, 20 years ago. So I, he couldn't have been that closeted. And he, he just yeah, basically, I don't think so. his, li his line was basically, well, you know, um, uh, we just, I don't really talk about it, but everybody knows, so. Well, how different is that from what Jody said? Well, Not very. Actually, the best line was from Amy Poehler at the end of the show. She and Tina Fey did a great job yes, uh, hosting yes, they the Golden did. Globe. And Amy s ended by saying, we're going home with Jodie Foster. <laughs> and I thought that was both a lesbian reference and a we're going to take care of this poor, lonely, confused <laughs> girl reference. I appreciated it. All right, on, on, on to the news. Well, let's dispose of a little uh, marriage news because we got a few updates there well, to go through. We got an interesting development in Rhode Island because, um, you know, they're moving towards passing a same sex marriage bill there. But uh, Governor Lincoln Chafee, who was a Republican, now an independent, yeah. uh, says, I will not sign a bill that says put this to the voters. It's right. not the kind of thing we should do that with. Right. And uh, President Obama's uh, White House. Uh, announced that he supports uh, the marriage, proposed same-sex marriage equality bill in Rhode Island. He, they've now been going state by state with that. They support the bill in Illinois. They support the bill in Rhode Island. And hearings have started in Rhode Island on the bill. It's supposed to sail through the House. The Senate's going to be a little tougher, but uh, it's expected to be now, approved there, let's too. Let's talk about what's going on in Wyoming, because uh, they're, they're introducing legislation to open up marriage to gay couples, mm -hmm. but they're also introducing a uh, civil sort of a civil partnership bill as well, although the sponsors say, we really, wa we really want to get marriage. Uh, that's what we want. So what's going on there? Uh, it's very confusing. And who's jumping in to support all this but the Republicans? Yes, Some they are. of whom say they prefer a marriage bill. Right. So. And, well, you know, there was that poll of like Republican leaders saying, we don't want to talk about this anymore in campaigns. So that so, says a tide is sort Wyoming of. Wyoming has always been an independent state. They sent, the, didn't they send the first woman to the uh, House? Before women could vote. Exactly. So, uh, Jeanette Rankin. She's the one, she's the only person to have voted against World her. War I and <laughs> World War II in the Congress. The only one. I met her 40 years ago. Wonderful. Yeah. A hero. Uh, in Illinois, the right-wing Republicans are angry at the Republican Party chair when, for coming out and supporting marriage equality. So there's a little division in the party there. But that bill is uh, expected uh, to advance. And then there was uh, the leader of uh, the fight in the legislature in Maryland, uh, Don Dwyer, who got in trouble for uh, kind of a, what was it, a, a crashing his boat and injuring four children in August. And he says, this happened because of the defeat on marriage <laughs> and, uh, and, my, and his wife. It made me go home and get drunk and crash my oh boat. Oh my God, I was physically <laughs> ill. You pour your heart out, heart into an issue like that uh, and it's devastating. We're, it's all our fault always. Our fault. Always, everything. That's what, uh, well, that's what the Westboro Baptist Church says. In Minnesota, they are about to go, go ahead and introduce a marriage equality bill. But the uh, House of Delegates in Virginia, a subcommittee there, killed a bill that would have repealed the uh, state constitutional amendment against same-sex marriage. Come on, Virginia. I, wanna go, I went to we the university and I want to go back. Have we discussed the fact that, the, that John Boehner and the House Republicans have now upped the uh, uh, total yes, payment to Yes, we did. You mentioned it last three week. Million? You mentioned three million? it last okay. week. I heard it on this show. Okay. All right. So much for that. Let's move on to other news. Well, uh, interesting, uh, interesting contrast, this inauguration of Obama versus four years ago. Four years ago, he picks Rick Warren to give the uh, benediction or whatever. whatever and one of the prayers. Saying, one of the prayers. And everybody goes freaking out and saying, how can you choose this idiot? But it all goes ahead, and Rick Warren speaks, and we all fume. This year... First of all, they got an even worse guy, whose name I mispronounced uh, last week. His name is Pastor Louis Giglio, and... <laughs> He's got a history of preaching against homosexuality in extreme terms. I had a crush on Jesus, but not in that goofy way. <laughs> oh. Like like St. John. 
<laughs> and the beloved and disciple. much worse uh, stuff about uh, the uh, sinfulness of homosexuality and, and getting out of it. Yes, and well, then he says, <laughs> suddenly he's no longer the uh, the benediction uh, right. pastor. Says he doesn't want to be a distraction. Due to a message of mine that has surfaced from 15 to 20 years ago, it is likely that my participation in the prayer I would offer will be dwarfed by those seeking to make their agenda the focal point of the inauguration. Yes, it is our fault, and we didn't want you there, and you're not going to be there. <laughs> uh, Nothing about, I was wrong, I've changed, yeah. I, nothing, nothing. Clearly yeah. he has not changed well, his Well, lots mind. of people have de-emphasized their, their uh, well, spouting he, on these things. He says all he cares about is Jesus now. Uh, but nonetheless, he's angry at us. So they have picked a replacement, and that is the Reverend uh, Luis Leon. A, an Episcopalian. Uh, for, who is the pastor of St. John's Church, the President's Church, across from the White House. Uh, he's Cuban, born in Cuba, uh, born in Guantanamo, actually, Cuba. Uh, very pro-gay church, and he is uh, he's the new guy giving the benediction at the inauguration. Right. So this is a change, and the White House was quite overt about the fact that they were not pleased with Pastor Giglio, the anti-gay guy. Didn't they Google him? <laughs> This is what I wonder these days. <laughs> Don't you Google these people? And it's for the really second time, Obama has invited the Gay and Lesbian Band Association to march in the inaugural parade. Oh, boy. Yippee. All right. Well, uh, sort of big news from San Francisco where uh, the uh, one of the supervisors there, Campos, a uh, gay, gay guy, mm -hmm. has uh, put forth a proposal to rename the airport. San Francisco International for Harvey Milk, uh, the uh, out gay supervisor and gay martyr uh, from many, many years ago. But the thing is, if they pass this, it has to then go to the people for a yes. referendum. Yes. Which, you know, was no whatever. Now, you know. Does it have to go to the people of San Francisco or the people of I the think state? It's, I, I think it's just the people of San Francisco. I think so too. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. It's a municipal, yeah. well, international but municipal airport. Yeah. Um, but, you know, some people say this would be great. It serves, it serves 68 countries where homosexuality is illegal. <laughs> and then when they'll have to fly in there to the gay thing. Well, what then could our be wrong? But our friend uh, Michael Petrellis, who's a, a gadfly activist out there, says, hey, you want to name something for Harvey Milk? Build the affordable housing that we need and name that after him. Something, that's the kind of thing that Harvey would have wanted. But we'll see what happens with I this. I think that's true, but I think they're not mutually exclusive. There you go. There are many things named after Ronald Reagan. I uh, like the airport. <laughs> In Washington. Yes. All right. Uh, uh, so Chuck Hagel looks like he's got a pretty good chance of being confirmed. Because our Senator is. Chuck Schumer came out for him. Well, and, and it's, that's, I mean, of course, Schumer's main reservations were over Israel. Yes, uh, although he's certainly taking us into account, too, and so is Hegel. Yeah, but then he'd have to take his own record on gay rights into account. Well, he at least has so changed. Sterile. Yes, he, he has. has. changed. Uh, yes, he has. And Hegel wrote a letter to uh, Senator Barbara Boxer saying he will do all he can to provide equal benefits to members of the military. Yes. He, uh, you asked me last week whether, because uh, I was asserting that he'd changed a little, uh, and here's what I found, that uh, he had written a letter to the New York Times in 1999 opposing Don't Ask, Don't Tell repeal. And, but and, and he not had in more, such nice terms either. But more recently, he bemoaned the loss of Arab translators because of the Don't Ask, Don't Tell and said he thought that was stupid. So that, that's the back and forth on that. But one thing he may have to deal with is the brewing controversy on these organizations that exist on military bases that are sort of affiliates of the military, uh, uh, spousal organizations that get some privileges on base and provide support services to military members. And there is a controversy because at Fort Bragg, an army post in North Carolina, there is a spouses group which is not a military group, is a private group, but has 
privileges on base, and they rejected the application from the lesbian spouse of a member of the military there. And they came up with all sorts of trumped up reasons, like she didn't have an ID. and They didn't and, cite uh, the Defense of Marriage Act? They did try to do that. <coughs> so the uh, Defense Department was asked about this, and has uh, because Fort Bragg has continued to oppose this, although they've given out some kind of limited passes to people, but they don't provide all the privileges of full membership in this organization. And uh, the Defense Department said, well, there's nothing we can do about it because the federal government does not have a non-discrimination law that covers sexual orientation. They're not relying on DOMA for this one now. I suspect this will change uh, over time. Couldn't, mean, could, couldn't the president do that by executive order? Uh, I think this is sort of local option because at the same time the Marine Commandant issued an order to all service clubs that they must admit same-sex spouses. They let Barney Frank's uh, spouse into the congressional spouses thing and Tammy Baldwin's and things like that. Uh, you can do all that. So I think uh, this thing at Fort Bragg is going to change quickly. But yeah. that's that's something that Hagel might be asked about at his uh, right. confirmation here. A little, a little local news in New York, but probably some uh, national ramifications. We've been telling you that out lesbian Chris Quinn is the leading candidate for mayor of the city of New York in the polls, and it is early, but the, the election is this year. She leads in the polls now. She's got 35% uh, and her nearest rival is only at about 11 or 12. Uh, yes, 11% for 10% and 9% for her three male rivals, and she all of them would squash any Republican at this point, but of course, even this, Joe Loda. Yeah, well, Joe Loda is the would be the Republican probably, but uh, you know, you, actually, it's early still. Anna, Anna and I do not get to choose who gets to be mayor. It's all up to the establishment <laughs> in New York, the newspapers. They will destroy anybody they don't want and prop up who they do want, and we don't get to we don't really I, get a say. I don't think it's the newspapers because I don't think newspapers, anyone newspapers pays any the, attention to newspapers. Newspapers and the real estate industry work in sync. Mort Zucker, Zuckerman, who owns the Daily News, is a real estate developer, so they will, uh, you know, do what they have to do. To maybe they've decided on Quinn. We don't know yet. We get told later on. That's how I it works quite, in New York. I I understand how it has worked for yes, thirty years in New York. I, I think it's certainly is involved, but I don't think it's the whole story. If you want to know why we have people like Giuliani and Bloomberg. All right, well, let's look at other municipalities. Yes. Uh, uh, Vico, Kentucky. Why is it called Vico? Because it's named after the Virginia Iron, Coal, and Coke Company. It's in the Appalachians. V-I-C-C-O. has a population of 334 people, 334 people. And they became the fourth in Kentucky to pass an LGBT non-discrimination ordinance, according to the ACLU, Incredible. which pushed for it. Uh, and then there's Twin Falls, Idaho. City, their city council uh, passed a, a bill that covers just city employees, but it yes. covers sexual orientation. So that's a big, big step forward there Pinellas. in Idaho. County, Florida, which is St. Petersburg and Clearwater in that area, uh, has approved a domestic partner registry for all couples, straight and gay, you know, the non-marrieds, <coughs> but uh, couples who want to register their partnerships so that they can then be acknowledged uh, for various purposes in that county. And then a reversal and a breakthrough for us in Davis County in Utah. They had uh, banned in the local public library this book. We have a picture of it. Are we too early for this? No. Yeah, yeah okay. it's called Our Mother's House by Patricia Polico, P-O-L-A-C-C-O. Anyway, some parents objected to the book it's for little kids to read it, and they, so they took it off the shelves, and uh, first they put it into a, 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 an older, uh, younger people's uh, section, and then they, they said, the, the other parents said, that's not enough. Then they put up one of those things you put up behind the shelf. Now, because of pressure from the ACLU, they are putting it back so anybody can get it. However, if uh, you are a parent who doesn't want your child to read this, you can, I guess, put them on a list and then the library won't give it to the kid. Mm. But it's a breakthrough. It's a reversal and it's great. And a nice little breakthrough in Virginia, even though they are screwing with us on marriage. The House of Delegates there has approved uh, great gay activist Tracy Thorne Begland, uh, 
who you may remember is one of the first military guys to come out publicly. I went down to Virginia Beach to testify at his trial as an <laughs> expert witness, and the military said, he doesn't have to testify. We'll stipulate to whatever he says. Yeah. I didn't get to talk. Well, he was nominated to be a circuit court judge in Richmond, and he got rejected and turned down. And then he was, uh, was he appointed in an interim? I may be Anyway, they, they got the, the House of Delegates. They got the legislature to get it through unanimously. I think they got he, embarrassed by it. Uh, I should hope so. So he now is a uh, Richmond circuit court judge. That's terrific. Yes. You know, uh, I told you about, we all, we told you about the death of Gene Manford, the founder of the Parents and Friends of Lesbians and Gays, 92 uh, last week. And, you know, I, 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 a lot of stories, national stories across the country, but I, I wrote for the Gay City News about this, and I wanted to find out, you know, why was Jean, why did she do what she did? Yes, she had her gay son, Morty, uh, you know, who was a gay activist at the time, and she was standing up for him, blah, 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 but why, but why so big, and, you know, the first one to march in the parade with a parent sign? Well, Ethan Ghetto, who we know, who was very close to the family and lived with Morty for a while, said the reason was because Morty's older brother, Charles, who died in 1966, which was in all the obituaries, well, we're, because he killed himself because he was coming to terms with his own homosexuality. And Jean was just fiercely determined that this was not going to happen to Morty, who was very depressed over his brother's death. And that's why she threw herself into this so strongly. That was the big, you know, and that was it's true. It's life-saving work. It was true of some of the early, other early PFLAG activists. Um, Sarah Montgomery, who doesn't get much credit, a former suffragette. Every time she spoke at those meetings, she talked about her son and his partner killing themselves together. It was rough stuff, but that's what motivated a lot of these people to, to get involved in PFLAG in the beginning. Mm -hmm. It's a story that hasn't been told. No. Uh, okay. Uh, well, here's, here's an attempt to tell some of those stories. Uh, Mitchell Gold, the uh, furniture uh, manufacturer, and his husband, uh, Tim Gold, who is a researcher at the Smithsonian. Uh, a great feature story I read this week about them in the process of trying to create an LGBT history museum in Washington, D.C. We've uh, tried this, before. I well, hope it goes through this time. Uh, evidently, this effort's been underway for a while. Uh, they have 5,000 items in storage that they have collected and are holding on to various artifacts uh, as they try to uh, pick a site, build a museum, uh, get all that done. I think it's a great idea. Yep. Uh, Cindy Lauper is working with the Department of Housing and Urban Development to support one night counts of homeless people around the country with a particular emphasis on LGBT homeless youth. Her True Colors Fund is particularly uh, supportive of LGBT homeless youth. As if she's not busy enough getting kinky boots on the boards. And doing her new reality show. Right. Uh, the Courage campaign in California, which uh, did a lot of the great reporting around the Prop 8 trial, uh, Daily Trial Tracker, their Prop 8 Trial Tracker site was great. They have put up a new site called equalityontrial.com, which is meant to be a site that will uh, aggregate news of what's going on in courts and legal issues for LGBT people. So if you want a new site to check out uh, legal news online, uh, equalityontrial.com. Well, somebody who was trying to get legal information and all kinds of other information out there on the internet, uh, we, we all saw, uh, killed himself this week, Aaron Swartz, who I had not heard of, but obviously is a great innovator. When he was 14 years old, he developed uh, RSS. There's a picture of him. Uh, he's just killed himself at the age of 26. Um, and he was also, really led the fight uh, to defeat the Online Privacy Pi Piracy Act, the Online Piracy Act, which was gonna run through the Congress and basically limit the uh, use of the internet to a great degree. Uh, now, why, why are we talking about him? Obviously, we were, we were all the beneficiaries of what he did in terms of fighting, um, you know, for uh, openness, openness on the internet and all that kind of stuff. But he also acknowledged on his own blog years ago that he's had, he had male and female lovers. Now, uh, 
he was insistent in writing about this that having sex with you know people of, of, of the same doesn't make you anything. He says it you know it. it it's an act, it, not an identity. Which I wouldn't agree with. Uh, but well, I uh, think in the context of the world as it exists uh, and the way people are stigmatized and the judgments that are made, we do need to talk about an identity because it's treated as an identity. That's why we call the show Gay USA. It is, but uh, you know, in some uh, fantasy world where none of that judgment exists, you, uh, we may all be striving for that. Well, uh, yeah. Situation. Gore, Gore Vidal took a similar tack when he was talking about things, but what, what. What killed him, uh, you know, arguably, I mean, a guy was depressed, was this overreach by the prosecutors who he was under indictment. Uh, well, a lot of people have been prosecuted and don't kill themselves. So, well, uh, he was facing 35 years in jail, million dollar fines, all this kind of stuff for, for going into the internet and pulling out all these kinds of documents. And, and uh, th there was a lot of overreach in what the prosecutor was doing to him. Uh, they wanted to break him, they wanted to get others, this kind of stuff, and uh, that's what we have to look at. The same is true, of course, of Bradley Manning, uh, the gay and or transgender uh, uh, private uh, first class who continues to be uh, under uh, arrest and prosecution for having cooperated with WikiLeaks and gotten Defense Department. Well, let's see what comes out at trial. Well, his trial has now been postponed to June 3rd. Uh, he's facing life without parole. They, which is better than uh, execution, which considering they they're calling him a traitor. But now they're saying, "Oh, uh, Osama bin Laden asked for some of these documents, and therefore he's really, uh, you know, he's committed treason or whatever." It's nonsense. Osama, but it's Osama also Osama bin Laden asked for porn tapes too. Yeah, uh, it's. You know, you have Bradley Manning, you have Aaron Schwartz, you have uh, Tyler Clementi, you have these guys who are sort of uh, uh, gender non-traditional and, and uh, under attack and, and confused, and there's this whole sort of class of guys in particular who find themselves being assaulted in various situations like this, and uh, that may require some thought and analysis. Yes, indeed. Okay, international news? Well, we left off, uh, oh, we could talk about our entertainment news. Okay, all right, international news. Uh, the event of the week was at the Vatican where <laughs> four Ukrainian women uh, protesting the Vatican's uh, opposition to same-sex couples adopting children showed up to yell at the Pope. Let's oh. take a look. <laughs> But you know, God bless them for making a big public statement. They, uh, for those of you who are listening to the podcast, they had "In Gay We Trust" written on their backs, and they had "Shut Up" written on their. <laughs> <laughs> and they kept stomachs. shouting, shut yes. up, <laughs> shut up to the Pope, so they got As shut up. the cops were really dragging them away. And right. uh, uh, some woman in, in more of the footage is beating them with an umbrella. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she was. She but was thank you, thank you for that protest. Most offended. Now, big ruling from the European Court of Human Rights this week, mostly around uh, British cases, I guess they're all British cases. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people go to court and say, I'm a registrar, and I don't want to do same-sex marriages, or those it's kinds of... It's against my religion. My religion. And the, the court said, hey, that's discrimination against gays. You can't cite your religious belief in that. And uh, so we want, we want all those cases. The one case on religion that somebody won was that uh, she worked for a secular firm, and she was allowed to wear uh, a crucifix around her neck. That, that's, that's different. But, you know, j this, this is... Uh, you know, this is what's happening in this country. A lot of people saying, I want the freedom, the, the, especially the Catholic bishops, but many, many others. It's a re an infringement on our religious liberty if you ask us to cooperate in this sin. But that's a bunch of nonsense. 
because they you know there are many other things that they do. They that run public accommodations. They right. run uh, companies or organizations or enterprises that are subject to non-discrimination laws. Civil and laws. if the non-discrimination law includes sexual orientation or gender identity and expression, then you cannot discriminate. Well. You don't have to invite people into your house. You don't have to perform a marriage ceremony for them. But if you run a public accommodation, then you have to treat everybody uh, fairly and equally. The more complicated question is that a lot of money goes to religiously affiliated groups that are openly anti-gay although they always say, well, this arm of our organization won't discriminate in the provision of services, but you know that they discriminate in terms of their hiring from their own, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and I have a lot of objections to public money going to these groups. Well, and that comes up in the adoption field because the Catholic uh, groups that run adoption agencies with public money want to be able to not uh, uh, consider same-sex couples as adoptive parents, so and then they scream when the public money is taken away from them. So they're getting out of the business. Well, uh, good news from Canada, where a court was asked to uh, grant a divorce to a British couple that had gotten a civil partnership in Britain, and the judge said, it would be uh, totally antithetical to our uh, values and way of life if we did not treat this civil partnership as a marriage for purposes of divorce, and therefore we will do so. Well, I got an email about that from a viewer this week because there are a lot of there are some Americans who got married Americans who got married in Canada who are sort of stuck who can't get divorces unless they get back. I'm not even clear on what all the laws are. Well, they would have to go to Canada as this British couple was in Canada right. and asking for right. the uh, divorce. That you but know. You're going to get married, you're going to have to deal with a divorce. But laws. it's more complicated for gay couples, depending on where they got married. You get married in Canada, you go back to Idaho, Idaho isn't going to work on your divorce there, is what I'm saying. I see, because they don't acknowledge that. Exactly. Well, those cases have come up in the U.S. with yes. somewhat mixed results. Uh, in Paris, uh, this was depressing, more hundreds of thousands of people showed up uh, from the, uh, the hinterlands at the behest and bus. Uh, assist assistance, I'm sure, of the Catholic Church. France, an essentially to secular country, has rediscovered its faith. <laughs> yeah, they're demonstrating against the proposal because to legalize same-sex marriage. Us. Uh, Sweden, uh, good news, has stopped the forced sterilization of uh, transgender people who transition, uh, but. In this story, buried in this story, is the information that 16 European countries still require sterilization of transgender people. Terrible. 16 European countries. All right, AIDS news? Yes, uh, several things. First is strange, uh, we, you know, Jodie Foster may not be Honey Boo Boo, but uh, Honey Boo Boo has popped up in AIDS news because Uncle Poodle, the <laughs> gay uncle, is now saying that he's HIV positive. His lover gave him a HIV by not disclosing his status and not disclosing that he wasn't taking medications. And therefore, Uncle Poodle says he had the guy prosecuted reluctantly, and the guy is now doing five years in prison. Oh well, here's the worst part of it, and this is something that has always driven me crazy. Uncle Poodle says, I was very concerned about HIV, so I made sure that I tested regularly. This is called shutting the barn door after the horse is already right, out. Right. I tested in March, and I was negative, and then I tested in May, and I was positive. Testing is not a way to avoid acquiring HIV. Right. So well, we're not even... A, but we're, it's something that people should do. Yeah. Well, of course, but if it's not it's, it's not a prevention technique. Uncle Poodle? Is he Uncle there's Poodle? Some, yeah, or? there's some question about whether this is, uh, whether the details of the story are even true, but that's what's circulating. Uh, and, uh, well, it's a reality show. Oh, my God. Well, that's pretty real. Okay. Uh, bad news in New York where people uh, who are, who, with HIV who are below certain income levels uh, get reimbursed for their uh, public transportation to and from the doctor. And what used to happen is they'd go to the doctor, then they'd you know, sign a form that they'd been there and they'd be handed a Metro card. Uh, but now they've changed the system. They don't like that system. Now what you have to do is you have to call a number 10 days before your appointment 
to announce you're going to have an appointment, to answer 30 questions about your appointment, and then they will send you in the mail a Metro card. Listen, it's a, it's a broken system for everybody. You know, it is unbelievable. I, 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 went, I went to go get physical therapy for my foot. I am suffering here from plantar fasciitis. They said, oh, you didn't, you're not, you didn't have surgery. You can't have, you can't have physical therapy. I'm dying with this foot here, and I am doing my exercises, but I'm just saying the system is wor does not work for health. No. My, my plan is or called. Or saving money. My, yeah, my plan is called Healthy New York. Okay. Uh, the Supreme Court is going to hear a case that's been, uh, uh, had various results in various courts. They're going to resolve this. Uh, the federal government decided, I think in the Bush administration, that uh, to give AIDS prevention money to groups that work internationally, those groups had to sign a pledge that they opposed prostitution. <laughs> right. And, or they wouldn't get any money. I'm for it. Now, you can't work uh, in AIDS money. prevention and not work with prostitutes, but, uh, uh, and a lot of other people that the government doesn't approve of. But they, the government said, you know, it's Jesse Helms kind of territory. So the AIDS group of, uh, groups objected and sued, and they've had a good result in one court and a bad result in another court. Now the Supreme Court's taking the case, and, uh, when, uh. and Elena Kagan's had to recuse herself. So now we're down to uh, not looking very good <sighs> on this, but it's really obnoxious. Entertainment news. Let's go back to entertainment news. All right. Well, uh, the Miss California pageant, which is part of the Miss Universe system, had its... Before we get to oh, that, because we got we something else on the reel oh, here ahead that. of time. Let's do that. Uh, so Academy let's, Awards. Yes, let's do the Academy Awards. The big news, is, for us anyway, because we're involved, is that How to Survive a Plague, one of the two big Act Up documentaries that's uh, been released the in the last year. The other one is called year, United in Anger. Both well worth seeing, but How to Survive a Plague is one of the five finalists for the Academy Award for Best Documentary Feature. Yes, and you can see Ann in it, and Bill b b did a lot of work on it and is Bill in the Ballman. film. Bill Ballman, our associate producer. Also interviewed for it, but let's take a look at the trailer to remind you and quite your appetite. They engage in offensive and revolting conduct that has led to the proliferation of AIDS. If they would keep their mouths shut, nobody would ever say a word. We wouldn't know anything about it. But no, they march in the streets. They defy you. To be that threatened and to not lay down, to stand up, fight back is just incredible. We need our government to read this plan to save our lives. Science disagree with this. Why can't we have it? We are the ones who are fighting for people's lives. We did something remarkable. Congratulations to David France, first-time filmmaker. Congratulations, Ann Northrup. Uh, and it's and Bill also, And it's also nominated for uh, Independent Spirit Award, the ones that are given the night before. And, you know, if, yes, it's uh, a trip down memory lane for those of us who were around in those days, but also the way that film is working today is it is inspiring activists around the world about how you can organize and stand up for whatever you need to stand up. I wouldn't say it's reinvigorating the AIDS movement no. in the same way, but, but it's, that's, but it's, it's inspiring look, others who need to be very active. Last week I spoke to a high school senior class uh, downtown who had seen it and wanted to talk about activism. Uh, I spoke to the staff of the Hetrick Martin Institute in Glisson uh, who at a screening of it. I'm speaking at the Eleanor Bunham Theater on Saturday at the uh, following the three something showing if you want to come see the film there uh, Saturday and people are interested in talking about activism. Also want to congratulate Joy Thompson, uh, one of the main producers of Absolutely. it uh, who, who got this financed. I uh, also want to congratulate in our opening sequence, we have a quick shot of Cynthia Wade, our old friend, right. with an Oscar, who won an Oscar a few years ago for Free Held, the documentary about the lesbian uh, police officer in New Jersey who was dying of cancer and trying to get benefits for her surviving partner. Laurel Hester. 
Uh, yes, and, uh, and she's been nominated for another Academy Award for Best Documentary Short Feature, which was what Freeheld was. The uh -huh. new one is Mondays at Racine, which is about uh, women with cancer losing their hair. So, Cynthia, congratulations to you. And then there's our old friend Tony Kushner, yep. who wrote the screenplay for Lincoln, and he is nominated. I guess it's best adapted screenplay yes, from the he, Doris Kearns Goodwin he book. Uh, the Golden Globes just have one category, not original and adapted, and Quentin Tarantino won. I've seen both movies. I enjoyed Django Unchained, but uh, there's no question that Tony Kushner should be winning the screenplay award as far as I'm concerned. Well. There's also a, a one of the animated films nominated, Paranorman has a gay character, which they say may be the first gay character in an animated feature. Well. We could Hard to imagine, yeah. but <laughs> possible. You know, what about some of those seven dwarves, you know? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on to the together, uh, Miss California the USA uh, pageant. Well, let's get her picture up there. Uh, her name is Kylan Ariana Wenzel, and she is the first transgender woman allowed to compete in the Miss California pageant. Uh, this was Donald Trump's empire of uh, who he Miss was. Miss Universe. Miss Universe. He was. But it's uh, you know it's the Gloria all red went after him last year or a couple of years ago uh, and so they're allowed. It's a good it. thing. Yes. I, we credit where credit is oh, due. Absolutely. You don't see the Miss America pageant. Uh, don't ask me to say anything nice about Donald Trump. <laughs> I watched the Miss America pageant. I like I that Miss New York. I won. just want to say I had a nightmare the other day <laughs> about working for him and having to open the door for Donald Trump. That's how What's much I What's wrong hated. with you? It was a nightmare. <laughs> I'll explain it later off camera. <laughs> but he, we were, at least we had our clothes on. All right. Well, speaking of having your clothes on or not having your clothes on. Yes. Um, Let's, um, I saw Picnic, the revival of William Inge's Picnic this week. We have a picture of the production there. Uh, this is, William Inge w was a gay man. This play was 19. There's the torso there on the left, which is really one of the features of this uh, production. Uh, rippling. Rippling, yes. Well, it's quite a, it's quite a, I mean, that's really, I mean, it's not gratuitous because it's really kind of what the play is about. This is sort of like Mayberry RFD with sex. I mean, it takes place in Kansas, and it's a small town, and there's all this bubbling sexuality and repressed sexuality and all that kind of stuff. Uh, Ellen Burstyn is in it as the next door neighbor. I love her, and there's a lot of good acting in it, but I kind of don't know why they're doing this on Broadway. Rent the movie. Well, Kim it, Novak, William Holden, Rosalind Russell. It, it, this is a good production, but I, you know, I'm, I'm hungry for space to be used for some new ideas. I think we're a little bit past, you know, some of the issues in Picnic. Well, by then William Inge. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what you think of Cat on a Hot Tin Roof when it opens. Also, uh, I'll look it this backwards. Week, yeah. this coming week. I saw it, but I won't attempt to review oh. it. I I thought it was worth seeing. Let's put it that way. Go I like the play. Go back to Picnic for one moment because yeah. Hilton Alls in the New Yorker points out that in February in Kansas City, uh, the director Travis Chamberlain is uh, are, are putting together productions of Inge's short gay theme plays at the Jewel Box Lounge there in Kansas City, which was formerly home to the region's female impersonators, he says. So he says he'd give anything to see that. Get well, on a plane. Well, okay. <laughs> if you uh, and you, ha you saw one other play, the uh, Laurie Metcalf play. This is a new play called The Other Place. Uh, I'm not, you're not supposed to say what it's about because it's sort of revealed in the play, but it's about- Then don't. I won't, other than to say that it's still one of those plays where too much is told to me and rather than shown to me, and I would have appreciated it being more of a play. But it's a, it's a very powerful performance by Laurie Metcalf. And we will see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye.